after playing with the chunky pink foam insulation for my craters, I wanted to play with something a little thinner. Home Depot only sells big honking sheets, and I don't know if this stuff is going to rule or not. So it costs a little more, but hobby shops sell little bundles of smaller and thinner sheets online. That's okay, nice to help out the little guy and spurn Amazon when I can. The ruins I have made before using cardboard were grand, but they do look kind of thin. If I want to make something look like it is really made of solid rock, this might do the trick. Okay, let's give it a whirl. Right, let's mark out the first wall. I'm going to go with the same basic design as the wine box cardboard ruins, so there's some continuity of appearance, if not substance with three centimeters representing about six feet as a scale, which makes the walls almost six foot deep. Nice, a real castle vibe. 1.5 centimeters to the seal, so that makes it about waist height. The window rises up about 3.5 centimeters, and then an additional two where it arches up and meets at a point. So a total of about 5.5 centimeters per window. Then a gap of two centimeters to the ceiling, and then an allocation of half an inch for the foam I'll be using for the floor, and then repeat a couple more times. Then, breaking out the X-Acto and the utility knife, and with a metal ruler, I cut out all of the window openings. For the other wall, I have an idea to try and make this an imperial shrine. So I have a printout of an imperial aquila that might make a good stencil. And so I outlined it on the foam and then made another nice arched window beneath it. And then on both walls, cut in a nice ragged edge where the walls collapsed after being pummeled by heavy fire and all sorts of grim dark abuse. Then onto the buttresses. No flying ones this time, not for this go. I want it to look really squat and solid. I cut out a bunch of square strips of foam that I'll be using both inside and out, and then a couple of wider, shorter ones to place on either side of the altar wall, on either side of the window that'll be under the Aquila. And then with the Elmers, gluing them into position between the windows. The ones on the inside I'm cutting short so they can support the floor, which I cut out from foam and then slotted into place just to make sure it'll fit right. Now, on to the battle damage. Okay, let's see what works and what doesn't. First tactic, just using the X-Acto, cutting out little notches from the edges. Basically, where there's a right angle, it gets lots of little slices taken out of it. I tried dragging the X-Acto against the flat surfaces to try and scratch them up, but it generally just either bit into the foam, or if I used the flat, just scraped a little shallowly. It was just too bendy. But a little screwdriver. This was awesome. You can lean into it and drag, carving out nice, jagged veins of damage. It looked great, really shattered and crumbly like devastated stone. Thoroughly recommend. The little screwdriver is also perfect for just stabbing away at the foam, creating clouds of bullet holes, and for creating some full artillery or heavy weapon penetrations, and with the X-Acto making some nice jagged craters around them. Another technique that worked brilliantly on the floor and some of the other areas, slide the X-Acto in at about an eighth inch depth or so, and once the blade is sunk all the way in, bend back and just pop out the foam to get a representation of this sort of stuff. Okay, maybe a quick instrumental as I carve away, because this was a lot of fun.
So, with a large column to act as the connective corner, I glued it in position and used the blue tape to hold it in place while it dries. And while this happens, breaking out those Chenkao half beads to add some nice decorative lines along the buttresses. Okay, now this took a few goes to get right. Here's the basic idea. The building is stone, it's solid, it's built to take a punch. So flimsy stained glass windows just don't seem appropriate. So how about some sort of plasteel emblem, solid and reinforced, something poured and hardened and then lowered into place. As the rock around it gets chewed up, the symbol of the God Emperor remains resolute and in place. The toughened window beneath with solid bars, oh, that's busted open, but not the solid icon. The whole shrine could be leveled, but scorched, scratched, maybe buckled, the Aquila would be laying there on top of the rubble as a sort of big middle finger to the enemy. First time, I rolled out some normal clay that I bought to make that dish from Hannibal, where Mads Michelson eats Eddie Izzard's thigh. Not having access to Eddie, I used chicken. And damn, it came out good. Very thematic to present a dish that you smash open with a hammer to expose succulent chook. Anywho, with the Exacto, I cut out the Aquila and then I let it dry, started painting it with acrylic and Mod Podge, and it cracked and broke apart. Too skinny, on the struts, bin it. Okay, some more decorative touches. Grabbing some of the pipes from my big old bag of pipes, I cut a strip of cardboard, wrapped it around to get the right length, cut that section away and glued it into position to create additional bands and just make the pipes look a little different to each other and less generic, straight from the bag looking. Back to the ruin and I glued the main wall into position and then added the floor. While this dries, back to the beads, and using tweezers, I started grabbing some small ones and used them to represent rivets and created some bands around the pipes. I then used thin balsa wood and cut some little strips to be the wooden balls, and with the exacto, cut some little notches at the ends to make the timber look split and weathered. It's been here for a while. For a base, I dropped the shrine onto a piece of chipboard and glued it into place. Now, after slicing and dicing, I noticed these piles of cutoffs looked really rubble-like. So a few squirts of Elmer's against the base and sprinkle on that pink debris and press it in to ensure it sticks to give me piles of debris. And while this hardens, a little bit of bugbear brown paint to darken the wooden planks. Okay. Another go at the Aquila. Rolled out more clay, let it dry, and painted it more gently this time to stop it cracking. I wanted to drip in clear acrylic to create stained glass sections in the windows. Now, to stop it dribbling out, I added blue tape across the back to hold the acrylic in position while it dries. A little pour of the clear water texture acrylic, and then I added a little dab of red, stirred it up, and started to gently drop the mixture into the openings with a brush. Some, I just added the clear stuff to be plain glass. Okay, cutting away the excess of the base and then on to painting. Mod Podge and a squirt of white acrylic and a more generous squirt of black. Stirred it up to get a nice dark mix and then with a big fat brush, dabbed it all over the entire structure and over the rubble and on the couple of extra columns I'd cut out to be areas where supports had collapsed into piles on the main interior floor. Once it was dry, I made a nice wash with black acrylic and water and started dabbing it around, generating areas of scorched soot. Dabs all over the rubble really brought them out and by brushing into the main areas of damage and the winding scars, it settled into the deeper areas and really made them pop. The shadows look great. Man, this thing has taken a kick in. Okay, peeling off the tape and the window frames broke because the acrylic had bled through the tape and by peeling it off, it snapped the whole structure. Bin it again. <laughs> Thank you.
and then a squirt of white to the Mod Podge and some dry brushes on the edges of the walls and on the battle damage. I blasted the pipes with primer, gave the wooden planks a little darker wash to give them some texture, and then applied a dry brush of Mithril Silver to the pipes to highlight the edges and those rivets. Okay, start in again. I cut out the template, placed it on the opening, and traced out the window with a sharpie to make sure it would be a decent fit. Not too good, I don't want it flush, I want it looking like it's just hanging in there. Then, rolling out some clay with a rolling pin, I now used a plastic sleeve sheet protector because it's not sticky and can be peeled away easily once I'm done. Placing the stencil on top, a light application of the rolling pin creates an excellent impression in the clay as a stencil for me to cut out. I pondered just leaning in more heavily with the rolling pin to get the raised emblem and then just paint it, dry brushing to catch the edges. But I want my stained glass experiment, maybe another time. Anyway, when cutting, make sure to hold it straight up to ensure you get those nice right angles. And then, the same thing for the arched window. Cut out from the stencil, roll out some clay, drop the stencil on, another little roll to create an impression, and then cut it out. Using the edge of the metal ruler, I pressed it down across the clay to create a series of grooves and cuts across the surface, so it's not so flawless looking. I mean, look at the rest of the shrine. I know the emperor protects, but a completely untouched Aquila stained glass window is just stretching it a bit. It's not busted, but it's not impervious. Okay, let's make sure it actually fits. Yep, in it goes. And with the X-Acto, I just started smoothing out some of the floors, the loose bits, the bendy bits, just generally cleaning it up in place. Right, before the clay dries and becomes brittle, I added the tape to the back, got it into position, and if I can keep it horizontal and in place like this, perhaps I can add the water texture acrylic right here. I let the clay dry and then started slowly dropping in the water texture acrylic into the openings. And then, as I was checking it out, it fell out and shattered. Sigh. Bin it! <laughs> Okay, this time using the chipboard to roll the clay out on. Add the stencil, another roll to get an impression. Cut out the openings, and this time to stop it cracking, I applied the blue tape while the clay was still pliant, and then made the cuts and scrapes with the metal ruler, and added a few bullet impacts for good measure. Then I added the acrylic, but this time I am going to be patient because I'm getting sick of trying to get this to work. So, I painted the acrylic in using a brush to paint a thin layer all around each of the openings and then left this to dry totally. This way, I've got kind of a, a thin watertight seal so now I can pour in the rest of the acrylic and not have it seep through. With a nice ceiling base layer created, I tried adding a dab of red paint to the wingtips and when I poured in the next layer, because now I can just swirl it and blend it inwards through the wet acrylic, I got a nice gradient from semi-translucent red to clear or a nice outline. And then, once everything is totally dry, carefully peel off the tape and start to apply the Mod Podge and acrylic mixture, painting around and covering all that exposed clay. Now. One thing I did miss and would probably do differently, when I applied that initial layer of clear acrylic to get a seal before pouring in the rest, I should have colored it dark gray. If you look close, you can see that where the acrylic meets the clay, it's lighter than the frame because it's raw clay. Not a biggie, but something to remember if I try something like this again. Then, Cutting out some squares of chicken wire, I snipped off bits, opened up the squares, and bent them around before inserting into several sections of the shrine to represent exposed twisted rebar. And finally, I glued the pipes into place, added the broken columns, and glued the planks into position over some of the upper windows. And finally, a layer of super glue, and I dropped 
the two windows into place. And here we have an imperial shrine, a relic of the ecclesiarchy, pounded by appalling barrages of artillery and then riddled with small arms fire. The structure is a mere shell, on the verge of collapse. The barricades in the windows of the upper floor have largely fallen away. Columns and rubble lay strewn across the ground floor, but the emblem of the Aquila still stands, battered, brutalized, but still stoic and defiant. The Emperor protects.